Proverbs chapter number 19. While you are turning there, I was looking, uh, 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 the message Sunday night has been watched over 450 times. And so, um, it's uh, sometimes when you put things out there and you don't know if people's going to watch it or not, but I've had several folks, uh, you know, it tells me when they like it, it tells me these things, and, and I've had several folks I've never even met or even known of that they like the message and everything. And so, but I thought it was a, an important message that needed to be heard especially in the realm of what's going on in our cities. Uh, a lot of oppression going on in some cities around our country. And I uh, need folks to understand, listen, God does not have to give us any kind of warning. But He does because He loves us. And this evening I want to speak to you on the subject of learn now before it's too late. Learn now before it's too late. Let's look at Proverbs 19. Let's start in verse 22. Here uh, Solomon writes, The desire of a man is his kindness, but a, and a poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide steadfast. He shall not be visited with evil. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as Bring it to his mouth again. Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware. And reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. He that, hath, he that wasteth his father, and chaseth away his mother, is a son that causeth shame, and bringeth reproach. Cease my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. An ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. Lord, as we are to the preaching and the teaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself, Lord, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Ghost, that I may preach the safety word of the Lord. Father, I pray that you'd help us to see here the thought that you have here in Proverbs, in these little, in these, in this short, in these short verses. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, that you would. Lord, if there's someone this evening, Lord, on the precipice of making a very bad decision, or maybe they have already stepped into the decision, Lord, and we just ask that you would get their attention this evening. Lord, we thank you. I love you. I ask you to do all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. I ask God to bless the reading of his word. Learn now before it's too late. As a preacher, as you, a, a good pastor, and I'm not saying I'm a good pastor or not, but I will say this, a good pastor does the majority of his counseling from the pulpit. Because the pulpit, the preaching of the Word of God, deals with everything in life. And saying that is sometimes you're dealing with folks, and I've said this before, when you're praying for some folks, sometimes you're asking God either to move them or to move you. And I've even heard of preachers telling some folks that have been just knuckleheads, I'm asking God to break you 
or to take you. And let me tell you, when a pastor gets to that point to where God, he is praying that God will either break that person or take that person, you know it's gotten pretty bad. And I, want to, and I say that because we need, you know, there's some lessons we need to learn before it gets too late. Israel continued to make some bad mistakes, make some very bad decisions. As brother, uh, that was the brother Roy, I think I was we talking Sunday night. They never did repent. God kept giving them warning and giving them warning and giving them warning, and they never did repent. Sounds like a teenager, or a, not just a teenager, but a young adult who thinks that they know everything. But listen, if if you can, I know we have some teenagers, and you probably already cut me off by now. You're not think, and you're not even. You're just in la la land, waiting. Can't wait to get off, get finished here to get back on your phone to find out who posted what or who's doing what. But listen, some of you are about to make a very bad decision. Some of you could be. I mean, we have some. We have two seniors here. We listen, and let me tell you, we've got an entire school year. And I don't know how many times I've seen it, and I've, I've known seniors when they graduate high school, and they either go off to college, or if they don't go off to college, they, can, they step off the cliff, so to speak, into some very, very bad mistakes. And so Solomon here, he's teaching us that we, there's some lessons we need to learn before it's too late. The first thing that we need to realize that you need to learn is heart and character matter. Heart and character matter. Look at verse 22. Solomon here, he says, The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. Matthew Henry says this, It's better to have a heart to do right and a want and want the ability to do it than to have the ability to do right and want the heart. It's better for us to have a want to do right, a heart to do right, and wanting the ability to do it than having the ability and not having the heart. And I would say in America right now, that really sums us up. In America, we have the ability to do right. We're really not oppressed by our, by our government like some third world countries are that you can't go out and share the gospel. We are, in America, we have the ability to do right. We have the freedom to do right. To, we have the freedom to gather together to worship as God has seen fit, as God desires us to, and to worship Him biblically. We don't have to go to a certain denomination that's overseen by the government, and we have to do it this way. We have the ability to do right, but it's a lot of, it seems like sometimes we're like Israel. We don't have the heart to want to do right. This is what, this is what Amos was talking about. God, as he was prophesying to Israel, pronouncing their judgment, it says they don't know to do right. We have the ability, and as believers, we have the know-how. The Holy Spirit resides inside of us. We have the, the comforter. We have accountability. Listen, there's no greater accountability than God himself. But because of our sin, we get, when we give our life to our sin, we tend to not have the heart to want to do right. Let's, let's, let's own up. We're, listen, a lot of times we're just very old two-year-olds. Aren't we? 
the terrible twos. And all what we do is we spend, we'll, we, we, you know, we, we have the ability, you know, even a two-year-old has a little bit of ability to do right. I mean, they've learned a little bit, right? Just, just a little bit. At least they know the word no, right? They, they know the word no a lot of times. And so and you become mom no and dad no. But a lot of times we're like those two-year-olds. We, we might have the ability to do right, but we just, we, we just don't touch that. So what do we do? We touch it. And so it's better to have a heart that wants to do right and not having the ability, but than to have the ability and no heart. And so that's what Matthew Henry is saying. That's what he's talking about here. Not only that, in the second part of that verse where the Solomon says, listen, a poor man is better than a liar. A poor man is better than a liar. There are folks out there who have some, might have some money, might be businessmen out there, that tell you that they will do such and such, but they don't. There are folks out there that, you know, not even, let's just, let's not even we, there are members of churches out there that say that they will do this, but they don't. This is the application here. And I will tell you this, listen, if you are not honest, you deserve to be confronted. If I'm not honest, I deserve to be confronted. So Solomon's saying, listen, it's better to be poor than a liar. And so, listen, yes, there are folks that will say that they're going to do this, or they're going to do, listen, the road paved to hell is paved with empty promises. And so, listen, Solomon is teaching us, listen, heart and character matter. Number two, laziness isn't desirable. Laziness isn't desirable. Look at verse 24. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Listen, we ought not to be a people that has opportunity but doesn't want to do anything about it. He see, this Solomon here is telling us that a slothful man, a lazy man, what he's doing is he'll put his he'll be cold outside. He'll hide his hands in his bosom, but yet he will die of hunger because he is so lazy he won't reach down and take the spoon and put it up, put food to his mouth. Laziness is not desirable. Let me tell you something. That is, that is not uh, being lazy, being slothful. Listen, that's, uh, that's the farthest thing from it. Anything, anybody want to be desirable. And so, we, we need to listen. We, ought, we need to work. When God has given us the opportunity, we need to work. And number three... Disobedient children are a reproach to your parent, to them, to their parents. Disobedient, disobedient children. Look at verses twenty six and twenty seven. He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. And I'll give you this warning. We have a lot of folks in here who still have some young children. We have uh, some folks in here that have really young children. I'll give you this. You better break them now. Because when they become teenage years, it's even worse. It gets worse. Listen. 
parents, you ought to use, <coughs> excuse me, you ought to use a rod while it still works. I'm not saying beat your children. Okay, I'm not telling you to, for I'm not telling you to abuse your child with, to beat them half to death. No. Talk about the rod of correction. And so, while they're still young, we need to be training them up in the admonition of the Lord. Right? Proverbs tells us that. It tells us that we need to be bringing them up in the admonition of the Lord, training them that way when they get older, they won't depart from it. Right? And so we need to, you know, listen, my dad was not bashful when it came to swinging that belt. And I don't think I ever heard my dad say, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Because I know that's a lie. Because I guarantee if he had said that, I said, well, you bend over and let me try. And let's see if it hurts you as much as it hurt me. But no, 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 listen. Talking about disobedient children, it's a, it's a reproach. And so Solomon here, he's talking, and, and being a reproach, you know, in order, in order for a child to be a reproach and disobedient to their parents, they have to get some kind of instruction somewhere. They have to have gotten some kind of instruction. Listen, you know, well, we know that sin is just, it's, babies are born sinful, right? Who do you think is giving them that instruction? That's that flesh, right? Well, we see here in verse 27, Solomon says, Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. And so Solomon, and listen, there is an instruction that isn't good, that is not good instruction. And I, I'm hearing all kinds of horror stories that you, right now, from parents that are, that if I'm doing this, Distant learning. Hearing horror stories that, you know, mom and dad can't watch while, while their kid or their kids are in school. Listen, that right there ought to be a red flag. I need to do something different. Right. I'm hearing red flag. I'm, I'm hearing this that a kid had a, was it a Nerf gun or something that had a zombie on it, you know, just a toy. And, and Listen, I understand the t teacher may not have any kind of, you know, common sense may be chasing that teacher and she's running away from it. But listen, I, there's all kinds of horror stories we, we we're hearing right now. And there is some bad instruction. Mom and dad, that Xbox does, is not going to give them good instructions. It's not, you know, that watching, you know, listen, I don't know if you know much about Facebook, some of you. Obviously not from what you post. But let me tell you, there's some bad instruction on Facebook. Every, it seems like every couple of months there's a new trend of teenagers doing something deadly. Some new uh, game. Challenge winds up killing hundreds of teenagers because they can't discern right from wrong because they're getting bad instruction. We see what our we see what our society has become with bad instruction. We've seen it. We, our society has gotten so far out of whack with bad instruction now that they're trying they're trying to to. Uh, put laws on the heart. You can't, you can't, you can't try to put laws on morality, or certain morality. It just, it's just there. This is, this, is, this is why our Declaration of Independence works. This is why our Constitution works. Because we know we're going to have to answer to somebody. I'm not trying to be political or anything in that nature. I'm just telling you, there is, a, there is a lot of bad instruction out there. And mom and dad, you need to be privy to it. You need to know that it's out there. You can't be, have nice cop, good cop, or good cop, bad cop. 
I said, be a bad cop all the time. If you can save your children from stepping off into the precipice of a very bad decision. Like I say, what, what is it going to take for us to, to you to learn before it's too late? What is it going to take? See, some of us, we get some bad instruction. I don't need to do this. It's a command of God, but with the bad instructions, I don't need to do that. That's for so-and-so. And not only that, but we've convinced ourselves that we don't need to do that. Whatever, whatever commandment you want to put in, bl in said blank, this is God's commandment. Whether it's witnessing, whether it's tithing, whether it's service, whether it's this, whether that, we, we've got some bad instruction, you don't need to do that. My, my grandma at one time said, Mark, you don't need to tithe. I was in Bible college, she goes, you don't need to tithe. Listen, you're going to college to be a preacher. Bad instruction. Very bad instruction. And we've convinced ourselves, yeah, I don't need to do that. I'm okay. And that decision alone creates, and you start doing another bad decision, another bad decision, another bad decision. Before you know, you're out of church. You're out of fellowship with God because you've had some bad instruction. You've, you've taken some instruction that has caused you to err. And so Solomon says, listen, son, don't take this bad instruction. Now, I'm sure Solomon was telling him what instruction not to take. No. This is, you know... And so... We, we need, uh, as, as parents, we need to be careful what source we're using for instruction. Be careful of the source. Listen, I understand there's a lot of good historical books out there to teach, to learn history and to learn things, but make sure you're getting it from the right source. Remember what? Too long ago we talked about what well do we want to drink out of? What well we want to drink from? Just a few chapters ago we were talking about this. Make sure your children are getting the instruction from the right source. See, we, we, we complain about Israel. Why can't they just get it? Don't we? We read, we, we read first, you know, we read first, second Samuel, first, second Kings, you know, first, second Chronicles. We, we this history of Israel. Then we go into uh, the major, pro, major and minor prophets, and we hear God is getting ready to send judgment. We're like, hello, is there a lot not going off? And then we ourselves, we get in the same boat. We don't see it. Because we've gotten into, we, we've tippy-toed uh, into uh, uh, the, wrong, the wrong well. Oh, listen, I, I just need to learn. Just, listen, I'm just right here. I got one foot on land and one foot right here. And before long, that foot that's in the tippy-toe starting to feel nice and cool. So you go, that feels good. And we just get closer and closer and closer and deeper and deeper. For I know you're in San Luis Pass getting swept away and there's no hope. There's a lot of folks that die in San Luis Pass because they wade out way too far. And the riptide gets them. We get in that, we'll start getting the instruction, uh, the source of bad instruction will get pulled by the riptide of sin and it'll just sweep us out. Learn now while you still can. What's it going to take for us to get what God is trying to teach us? What is it going to take for us to learn to be obedient to Him? Like I said, I've prayed a lot. Move them 
or move me. And I will tell you, He's done both. He's moved others away from me that I've been praying, and He's moved me. Now, I pray I never get to the point to where I'm asking God, break them. Now, I have prayed for God to break people. I've even asked God to break me. But I hope I never get to the point where I'm asking God to take somebody. Hope I never get that that point to where I'm so bitter, I have no empathy left. That I'm to that point. I, I was when I was in college. There was a, one of my professors says, you know, we, we were. I don't remember what class it was, but I remember the story he was telling. He said, I was dealing with this one person. He said, they were so wrapped up in sin. I'd come home late at night. He goes, I'd be in bed, dead sleep. I'd get a phone call. He goes, this went on for weeks. And he goes, in that phone call, he'd say, I'm just going to kill myself. And the pastor would wake up, and he would talk to him. And once in a while, he'd go to his house if it was that bad. And he said, one day, he goes, I was just so tired of it. He called, and I said, well, fine. If you're going to kill yourself, just do it. Because he was tired of dealing with him. Guess what? He did it. I'm not saying he's a good or bad pastor. I'm just saying, look. What point do we have to get to before God gets our attention? So, well, listen, we're trying to get understanding. We're trying to get knowledge. Dig into the book of Proverbs. What are we going to have? What is going to have to happen before we get it? And so that, that is what I believe Solomon here is trying to teach us here in these few verses is, listen, there's some issues that we need to deal with And what is it going to take for us to deal with them? What is it going to take? Lord, as we come to conclude this evening of chapter 29, Lord, there's a lot of things, Lord, that we could have discussed this evening. Lord, I know I didn't cover every verse this evening, uh, Father, and that we have here, Lord, but there's just so, such wisdom, Lord, if we would just take time to meditate on these verses and take time to read these verses and to implement them into our life, Lord. And I believe wholeheartedly, Lord, if we would implement these Proverbs into our life, that we would get knowledge, we'd get understanding, Lord, and that we would get the fear of the Lord, which is life. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to that you'd help us to learn before it's too late. Lord, if there's someone here that is or tiptoeing into the sea of sin, Lord, and they're just about to jump in and make a decision to go all in, or maybe they've gotten bitterness in their heart and towards you and towards authority in their, in their life, and they're just ready to go the opposite direction. Lord, I pray for that person. I lift them up to you. Lord, that they'd learn before it's too late. Lord, that they'd turn back to you. Lord, we just th Lord I just want to thank you for your word, what we have in your word. Lord, I know it wasn't a real long message this evening, Father, but I believe or we can get what you're saying. Or that heart, character matter, or that laziness is not desirable. A lot of things that we have here this evening, or that we can we can spend hours in here talking about your word. Lord, I pray that as we have the invitation that you'd have your will in your way. But I pray that you've spoken to your people through the preaching of your word. Your people will respond for it. Christ's name I pray. Amen. Let's stand as God spoke to you this evening. Make sure you do business with